and good evening. Welcome to the 20, 2022 gubernatorial candidate debate, hosted by the Saipan Chamber of Commerce. I am Kimberly Camacho, the Saipan Chamber Executive Director. On behalf of the Chamber Board of Directors and its members, Sizu Espaasi, Giliso, thank you for joining us tonight. Our moderator is from the neighboring island of Guam. She is the top host of News Talk K57 Guam, Mornings with Patty. She has been invited to moderate political debates in every Guam election season and has hosted numerous events for organizations such as Red Cross, American Red Cross, Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association, Guam Chamber of Commerce, and many more. She has been named Journalist of the Year and listed as one of the 25 most influ influential women on Guam. Please help me welcome Ms. Patty Arroyo with a warm round of applause. <laughs> Next to Patty is our auditor, Dr. Joshua Wise of PHI Pharmacy. And to Patty's right is Dr. Nelson Crum and Donna Crum of Paradise Dental, who will be our timekeeper for this debate. Please help me give them a warm round of applause. I would, like, I would like to call upon Joe Guerrero, President of the Board, to provide his opening remarks. Check. Mic check. Alpha Day is a Tiruwami. I'd first like to begin by acknowledging the co-founder of the Saipan Chamber of Commerce many, many years ago, Uncle David Sablon. And along with him are my fellow board members of the Saipan Chamber of Commerce, uh, Mr. Alex Sablon, past president. Past president, Velma Palacios. Director, Janice Tenorio. Director, Marcia Cavill. Director, Joshua Weiss. Other board members, Nicole Babauta, Shane Villanueva, and Das Christian, who are not here tonight. As president of the Saipan Chamber of Commerce, I'd like to express an undang kuluna sigzus maasi zangilisa to all the candidates for their trust in the Saipan Chamber of Commerce to conduct a fair and honest debate. To their families and supporters, chamber members, and everyone else watching online to witness this much-anticipated gubernatorial debate. Thank you. In 1959, nearly 20 years before the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands was formed, a group of entrepreneurs, approximately 18, including Uncle Dave Sablon and the late Jose C. Tenorio Jotin, started to gather. And about 10 years later, 1968, again, a decade before the Commonwealth was formed, they incorporated the Saipan Chamber of Commerce. Jotin was its first president. In 1978, the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands was officially established, adopting a representative democracy form of government, patterned in large parts of the United States of America. A representative democracy is one where its citizens select by way of free and fair elections their government leaders. Today, many countries from all regions of the globe are increasingly trying to integrate candidate debates into their electoral process. 
Behind this global trend is the conviction that debates benefit emerging traditional and as well as emerging democracies in many ways. Debates are designed to help voters make informed choices, focusing candidates on policy issues rather than personality, religion, or ethnic loyalties, and hold elected officials to their campaign promises. Today is no different. As proud citizens of the United States of America and residents of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, let us embrace democracy as well as our constitutional rights, including the right of free assembly, freedom of the press, and free speech. Let us look toward all three gubernatorial candidates before us with an open mind to hear how they plan to serve us and all, and all who call the Northern Marianas home. Sisus Maasi Kiliso. Uh, before we begin the debate, allow me to briefly go over some rules and the format. Uh, candidates shall be addressed as Mr. or Miss, as is customary. Candidates will each be given two minutes for opening statements and three minutes for closing statements. The order of opening and closing statements uh, based on the Commonwealth Election Committee's ballot number assignment, which is as follows. Number one, Ms. Sablon. Number two, Mr. Palacios. And number three, Mr. Torres. Candidates shall adhere to all time limits on statements, answers, rebuttals, and responses. Time limits will be strictly enforced. Candidates may not use profanity, display obscene gestures, or intimidate or threaten anyone at this debate. I will state when the time begins. All questions have been kept secret by our auditor and placed in sealed envelopes. Debate questions were derived from those submitted by chamber members as well as the general public, and in some way, all questions relate to business or the economy. The audience shall refrain from talking, applauding, and making noise, doing anything visible or audible to express support or opposition to any candidate during the debate. All electronic devices must be turned off or set to silent mode, and if you must take a call, we ask you please to exit the hall quietly. The use of mobile phones or devices to take videos and photos is not permitted. Violations will, unfortunately, prompt immediate removal from the debate venue. Timekeepers will be present to keep time of each candidate's response. Timekeepers will have cue cards that will read 60 seconds, 30 seconds, 50, 15 seconds, and stop. And it'll be accompanied by a bell ring. There's his job, that's his job. So uh, let me allow, uh, allow, allow me to introduce your gubernatorial candidates for the Commonwealth of Northern Mariana's upcoming November election. Miss Christine Sablon graduated with a master's degree from the University of Hawaii in 2016 with a concentration on urban and regional planning with a graduate certificate in conflict resolution. She served three terms as a legislature, as a legislator under the scene of my House of Representatives and chairs the Health and Welfare Committee. Prior to this, she worked as environmental specialist and waste reduction coordinator at the CNMI Division of Environmental Quality. She is the daughter of Eugenio and Carmela Sablon, a godmother to th three, auntie to many, and enjoys karaoke during her free time. Mr. Honor Palacios graduated from Portland State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration. He currently serves as the CNMI's Lieutenant Governor and has 20 years in public service with the CNMI legislature, including House Speaker of the 15th legislature and as Senate President for the 20th legislature. Prior to this, he served as Director of the Division of Fish and Wildlife and Secretary of Department of Land and Natural Resources. He is married to Maria Velas de Blanc Blanches, and together they have four children and six grandchildren. He enjoys playing golf, but that has recently been replaced with playtime with his grandchildren. Mr. Ralph Torres graduated from Boise State University with a bachelor's degree in political science. 
He currently serves as the ninth CNMI governor. Prior to this, he served as Lieutenant Governor under Governor Eloy Enos as Senate President of the 18th Legislature and Chair of the Committee on Health and Welfare in the 17th Legislature. He is married to Diane Tudela Torres and together they have six children. An avid outdoorsman in his free time, he loves fishing, farming, and camping with his family. And so now we will begin the question segment Again, these questions have, okay, I, I apparently I have a lot. So let's, um, let's start with um, the opening statements, I apologize. And we will begin with Ms. Sablon. Thank you for your opening statements, ma'am. When the people of the Marianas voted 50 years ago for the covenant, we began our journey to fulfill the promise of self-government, of a closer relationship with the United States, and a decent standard of living for all. We emerged from the darkness of war, centuries of colonial occupation, generations of trauma, and we moved into the light of hope for a bright and beautiful future. The founding mothers and fathers of this commonwealth had big dreams, and we should too. Ladies and gentlemen, our commonwealth is at a crossroads, and there is so much at stake in this election. We have important decisions to make about our leadership in government and the kind of future we want for our commonwealth. We can choose the status quo. We now have a governor who's been raided by the FBI, impeached by the House, and is facing criminal charges. We have a failed, unfinished casino in the heart of Garapan, and an administration that's run deficits for six straight years, and is still spending money like there's no tomorrow. We can choose the same old leadership, and we will get the same old school politics, or we can choose to change. Mayla Fleming Staffler and I are running to be your next governor and lieutenant governor because we recognize the need for change is now. If we are to have hope again for that bright and beautiful future. And when we talk about change, we're talking about good governance. Because you deserve a government that is fair, honest, and fiscally responsible, and leaders that you can trust. That is the good governance that a Sablan Stafford administration will deliver. Thank you. And now we turn to Mr. Palacios. Sir, you have two minutes for your opening statement, and your time starts now. Thank you. Good evening. On the morning of September 7, 2019, 10 months after I was inaugurated as your lieutenant governor, one thing became crystal clear for me. The Commonwealth lost its way. The administration lost the trust of our people, and people lost faith, unfortunately, in our governor. Seeing the FBI raid the inner sanctum of your office shocked me. I was disappointed by the betrayal of public trust that I watched. That was a turning point for me. Unconsciously, or I made a decision to not be a partner with a person whose actions were the subject of federal investigation and would subsequent, be subsequently impeached by the House of Representatives and today is being charged by the Attorney General's office. Dave and I will work to rebuild your confidence in your government through transparency, accountability, and the strict adherence to the rule of law. We will su support a robust tourism and military economy, and we will reduce the high debilitating high cost of utilities through alternative energy. We will enhance our public health care system, and we will support, we will support our retirees. 
We will provide education, prioritize education. Ladies and gentlemen, on day one, David and I will open the books, check the books, and disclose the books. To you, the people of the Commonwealth, and no subpoena will be necessary. Thank you. Mr. Torres, you have two minutes for your opening statement, and your time starts now. Constituents, Manilu, Don Manyanago. Good evening, buenas noches, Lepuelo, Marmar. In this election, you have the opportunity to choose who will continue to lead the Commonwealth. As your governor, I stand by my record of accomplishments, and I ask that they stand by their record on what they have done for the Commonwealth. Over the next hour, I will be gladly embrace criticism, but not misinformation. As your governor, I spearheaded the most successful COVID-19 task force in the nation, while no playbook ever existed. Remember that FEMA projected what would happen in May 2020. Over 6,000 cases, over 400 will be hospitalized, and over 300 people of our own people, casualties. Our ER will be backed up, hospital beds will be insufficient, and the morgue would be overcrowded. That did not happen under my leadership. As I've made numerous tough decisions, even though they are unpopular, to safeguard our health and welfare to Typhoon U2, Solidor, Mankut, and Super Typhoon U2, while my critics have wide, widespread misinformation, we continue to make improvements to protect our people. Look around, CIP projects, 100% retirement plus bonuses, Pacific mini games, quota, substance abuse, airlines, tourism, and diversification of our economy. As we grow through tonight's debate, remember that my track record of progress and success speaks for itself. Thank you, Yeliso, Marami Salamat po, and si Drew Smonsi. Thank you, candidates, for your opening statement. We will now proceed to our question segment of the debate. Again, these are all sealed, and we have not had any access to them, so give me a second to open this up. Ms. Ablon, various waste management initiatives have surfaced, including banning of plastic bags, limiting the use of styrofoam containers, and universal garbage collection. What are your plans to address solid waste management throughout the CNMI to keep our islands clean for our residents as potential investors? Ma'am, you have two minutes. Thank you. This is a subject that's very near and dear to my heart, having served as a waste reduction and recycling coordinator years and years ago for the Division of Environmental Quality. And solid waste management is, is a huge, huge part of our plans for economic development and infrastructure development uh, for, for public health and for a cleaner environment. Um, I support a, a, a ban or restrictions on plastic bags and styrofoam. We are one of the last places in the, in the Pacific to not do that yet. Uh, we have passed legislation a number of times in the House, uh, thanks to the efforts of uh, Representative Sheila Pavalsa, who chairs the Natural Resources Committee. And we continue to try to get it out of the Senate. Um, and as for uh, what we really need, see in my mind, Saipan, Timian, and Rhoda is a comprehensive a system of solid waste management that includes sanitary landfills, uh, which Congressman Kimberly Sablon, uh, thanks to his efforts, we have funding to help our, especially our neighbor islands of Timian and Rhoda, develop sanitary landfills, um, and, as well as transfer stations. But we need a more comprehensive program that includes uh, collection, waste reduction, recycling, uh, and, and then proper disposal. And um, part of our Sablon and Sablon Stafford administration's plans will be to, to pursue that system and, and make a collection, universal collection available to everybody, including
including our low-income fam low families who may need that assistance. Thank you. Mr. Palacios. Thank you. you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time. Well, spent. my first legislation when, when I entered the House of Representatives in the 13th Legislature was to put together a legislation that will provide the revenue stream for the operation the new of the new landfill, the beautification tax. Today, we are very fortunate that Congressman Kilili had given us. Last year, $56 million for solid waste issues. That is what we need. We need to get up our, our seat and do something because today, Tinian has a transfer station but doesn't have a landfill. Rota has a dock and needs to be addressed. Saipan, we're still trying to address the overfill of the landfill. Dave and I, Dave and I will make sure that we do what is necessary with the resources that we have. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Torres, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. Nothing is more important than the environment. Nothing. And that people travel here around the world spending thousands of dollars. And that is true. The Governor's Economic Council came up with the Universal Garbage Collection. That is action. That will address all these concerns that we have here including Rhoda, including Tinya. When you want something done, you need something that's comprehensive for the entire Commonwealth. And I am proud to announce that we have done that and we continue to do that. I also want to thank CRM, BCQ, for having that, that a, the action of citation and giving everybody that was violating this. To everyone here, whether you're businesses or tourists, I ask that you continue to take care of our environment because this is what we have. Again, as governor, we continue to make sure that our environment is taken care of. Thank you. Ms. Sablon, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time starts now. Thank you. There has been a lot of talk for many years about the need for a universal solid waste collection system. Talking about it doesn't equate to action. I mean, the fact is that we still have open dump sites on Tinian and Rhoda. We still have a landfill that is, that is failing. Uh, and that we need to address. And that's where we need action, and that's what the Sublon Staff Administration will address and prioritize. This is the second question, and this will be directed to Mr. Palacios. Reports have shown that many high school graduates leave the CNMI for various reasons, including the pursuit of higher education in military service. How will your administration entice them to return to the CNMI and join your local uh, workforce. You have two minutes, and your time starts now. One of the biggest reasons why a lot of our students, after graduating from college, do not return home is the lack of opportunity and the low pay scale that we provide. As governor, we will take a look at raising the minimum wage. I know. That is probably going to be something very unpopular with the Chamber of Commerce. But at the end of the day, do we want to continue sending our kids to school and not coming back home? We need to provide them with that opportunity. Let's be honest about this. We've, we've spent so many millions of dollars in scholarships and financial aid to our children. And many of them do not have the same opportunity that they see in the United States or in Hawaii or in Guam, for that matter. We need to give them the opportunity to come home. I came home. I didn't have a lot of opportunities, but my father told me I need to come home to help the Commonwealth. After finishing college, I wanted to stay in the States because the opportunities were there. So we need to provide them all employment opportunities. And today, we have actually a lot of college graduates, military leaders that have come home because, you know, they want to, they want to help the Commonwealth and provide 
also lifting our society and our community through their, their education that we have invested in. Thank you. Mr. Torres, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. Of course, in order for us to entice our students, our kids to come back, you need to build a strong economy. That's exactly what my administration has been doing to bring back the economy. We have new airlines coming in, you have airlines that came in, and we are working to increase that tourist source by increasing over to Australia. Folks, if we increase our tourism to Japan, Korea, Australia, and any other travel source, those investors will also invest here in the CNMI. And I've been proud to say that we need to continue to support NMTI and support our locals here. At the same time, we have DOD, $165 million. That's a project that our folks from the states can come back and realize that there is opportunities here. And that's exactly what Vinny and I will continue to advocate for sources here that will bring our kids opportunity here and abroad. Thank you. Ms. Sablon, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. A strong workforce is key to economic development. And I agree completely that the time is now to raise wages and the standard of living and, and strengthen worker protections in our laws. And I have introduced a bill to do just that, and that is now pending in committee. Part of our Sablon staff, their plan for economic development is the Come Home Initiative, which is part of our Mariana Jobs Now program, to match people with job opportunities and training opportunities, and, and recruit people, recruit the, all the local talent that has left these islands to come back home. One of the things, one of the reasons people leave is not just for lack of opportunity, but because they believe that there isn't any fairness in opportunity. And we want to establish the foundations to assure them that there will be fairness, that they will be able to compete, there will be equal opportunities for gainful employment and success in the small businesses that they may want to come home and start. Thank you. Mr. Palacios, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal, and your Thank time you. starts now. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. It all, it all falls on the economy and opportunities. And I know that the governor, unfortunately, said that it is the economy is doing great. Unfortunately, despite that, we have no economy today. The only economy we can talk about is one that is federal, on federal support, federal life support. That is not an economy. And under the Apatang, Palacios Apatang, Thank you, Mr. Palacios. Will, your time is, your time has ended, sir. Now we're on to our third question, and this is directed to Mr. Torres. Investors as well as visitors coming to Saipan for the first time may see blighted buildings scattered throughout the island with clean and aesthetically pleasing surroundings being important to investors, visitors, and residents alike. How do you plan to address the aesthetics issue and enforce Saipan zoning regulations such as the Nuisance Abatement and Blighted Property Maintenance Act of 2018. Sir, you have two minutes and your time starts now. I understand how important it is to entice our new investors to come in. There's a lot to offer here. There are challenges. Uh, yes, we do have zoning, but zoning is also there to provide a, and educate and enforce what the law is being implemented or being proposed. We need to continue to bring in new investors to show them what cinema has to offer. Yes, our beauty. And we're working on making sure that there's better access and better resources and permitting and so forth so that it'll be business friendly. At the same time, I would like to also give new investors an incentive, perhaps even tax break, new money to come in, an incentive to employ new employment here in the cinema. Thank you. Ms. Blon, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. Thank you. Well, first of all, zoning needs to come out with the regulations to enforce the Blighted Properties Act. We, that has been pending for a long time, and, and we just need to do it. That's part of it, enforcement. Second, I'd like to bring up the big white elephant in the room that's actually in Garapan, the hugest blighted building 
on this island in the heart of our tourist district. The casino and the failure that that represents. And the responsibility for that flight falls squarely on this administration. Let's be honest about that. It's a failure. And it's, and it's probably structurally unsafe at this point. Um, and, and we need to do something about that. Um, and, and in our administration, we will have to assess the structural viability of that blighted building before we even before we can move forward with revitalizing Garapan, we have to address that elephant in the Thank you. Mr. Palacios, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts. Now. Thank you. You know, zoning has been with us for over a decade. I was in the legislature when the Saipan delegation passed the blighted property uh, legislation. I appreciate that, that question because here we are asking, going out, looking for investors, and the first thing that investors look at is, wow, this place is, is dirty. There's no, there, there, there doesn't seem to be any order. The first thing we need to do is enforce the regulations and the laws that's already in the book. We need to give zoning the resources that they need and hold them accountable to enforcing the regulations as it is supposed to be done. Thank you. Mr. Torres, you have now 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time starts now. I agree. We do need to enforce, and we have been doing that as much as we can. And all those private sectors, I also ask that when you violate and our regulators come and give you a citation, you need to continue to follow that as well. We are beautiful islands here. We need to continue to maintain that, but everybody needs to do their part. Thank you. This next question is directed to Ms. Sublon. A healthy population generates a productive workforce. Studies show that the CNMI has higher rates of non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure. How would your administration support and promote a healthier CNMI? Health is well, and our administration will take a holistic approach to caring for the health of our community. And it starts with funding our healthcare system. This administration has been atrociously delayed in transferring funds that we have appropriated and funds that have been allocated from ARPA for our health care system. Millions are owed. They may dispute the numbers, but we all agree that millions are owed to CHCC going back years. As for how we combat the problem of NCDs, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, we also need to raise revenues to support public health initiatives in the Commonwealth. And I support doing so through tax policies, effective taxation to, to combat the scourge of NCDs that's killing our people. We've introduced legislation for tobacco taxation and we've worked with the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation and advocates for sugar-sweetened beverages. Tobacco and sugar-sweetened beverages aren't necessities. We can tax them and we know that they're huge risk factors for NCDs. Then we direct those revenues to CHC. My administration will also look at ways to expand access to insurance. Med Medicaid parity, working with our delegate to finally gain full parity in Medicaid in the way that we're treated in the Medicaid program in the Marianas. I'd also like to offer a buy -in, an affordable buy-in program through Medicaid, through the government's insurance program, and then promote healthy living, including mental health. This governor recently vetoed a critical piece of legislation that would have expanded access to mental health through telepsychology through the, the SIPAC Interstate Compact. We will keep pushing for that, and I will sign that legislation when I am governor. Mr. Palacios, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. Thank you. Public health is a big issue. And thank you for pointing that out. Obviously, it's prevention. One of the reasons why 
we have a lot of these NCDs growing up on Saipan. We didn't have this much NCDs, diabetes. Why? Because we eat right, and our people exercise. They fish, they farm, they clean around. Isn't it unfortunate that today, we don't even have sporting, sports as a curriculum in our schools. That should be put back. I will support, Dave and I will support everything and anything that our public health care service asks for us to make, including giving them the resources again that they need. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Torres, you have one minute for rebuttal and your time starts now. Thank you. You know, talk about health. We have fit to lead. We have, right now, we are doing that. I've given every government employee two hours a week, two hours a week to do physical health or mental health. I think that's doing a great job for everyone. Second, Ms. Tina says something about reduction. I don't see any bill that she has introduced in the last two years that increases budget or addresses health care. And you want to talk about incentivizing athletes? This is the only administration that have ever given athletes during Pacific Mini Games an incentive when they give gold, silver, or bronze. Because I believe every athlete who raises the CNMA flag is priceless. Thank you. Ms. Blonde, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal, and your time starts now. Thank you. I'd like to run through the list of bills that I have introduced to promote health care in the CNMI. That includes tobacco taxation, which now sits in the Senate, a bill to establish a health network program within the CNMI to, uh, to extend services to uh, patients and connect them to CHCC's health network program, both on island and off island. And then, of course, the bill to improve and expand mental health services and, and access to mental health services for our people, which Governor Torres recently vetoed. The workforce is a critical component of any market economy. In view of the skilled manpower shortages in the Commonwealth, how do you plan to address this issue given the annual decline of CW1 visas and this program set to end by 2030? Thank you. Partnering with our private business community to see, really, where we need to go with this. And we will continue to create training programs for job skills that are needed for our workforce. And we will incentivize training by paying even up to half of employees being employed by the private sector and trained by the private sector. So in one year or two years, they should be ready Ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest. The days of the CW status or program, they are numbered. Let, let's accept and embrace, and embrace the HW visa and a, a pathway to improve status. We need, we need to embrace that. The federal government gave us they carved out, they carved out a unique CW program, but they gave us a sunset provision, 2029. Ladies and gentlemen, Guam is thriving with the ACE visa. Why can't we? The problem is we seem to be afraid and scaring ourselves. We need to, today is the day we need to begin that. Congress told us, don't come to us again. They told us that. Kilili is not going to help us with this because he helped us many times about this CW. We need to wake up, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope and I urge the chamber to take this task. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Palacios. Mr. Torres, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. 
Nothing is more important than you, our U.S. workforce. Nothing. As much as we would and I continue to support our contract workers, yes, under the contract workforce, it ends in 2029, 500 every year. We understand that. But even JAO said that even if you employ every U.S. citizen here that's eligible, we still need contract workers. That is a fact. And I am proud to say I have spent and invested at NMTI millions of dollars to continue to promote our own resources here. We have excellent resources here, working with NMC, PSS, our DOD, first phase, 165 million. I've been negotiating to make sure that the opportunity stays here, here in the Commonwealth, where our resources is you, our locals. Thank you. Ms. Blonde, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. Leila and I envision all of our educational institutions working in concert, NMC, NMTET, and the public school system, as well as working in concert with the labor department and with employers to create pathways for training, for jobs, and for apprenticeships. We will build a robust apprenticeship program in our administration. I've already talked about the Mariana's Jobs Now initiative and the Come Home program to recruit our local, local talents to come back home. But we also need to update our wage system and be more competitive in that arena. And finally, I, I want to emphasize how important it is to support HR 560, Kilili's bill that would give stability and relief to CW families and, and also to employers. They, CW individuals and families need to be part of our transition to 2029. Mr. Palacios, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time Thank you. Ready. I'm glad that Congresswoman uh, Tina Sablan had agreed with some of the, the projects and the programs that, that, that we will initiate. Uh, let's, let's be clear. We will have one position. We will sit down with our congressmen, the legislature, and we will, the Commonwealth will have one position on this particular issue, inclusive of a position from the business sector. Thank you. Now we're on to the sixth question, and this one is directed to Mr. Torres. This is a two-part question. What do you plan to do with the unfinished Imperial Palace Casino Resort in Garapan? And what do you think is the best way to handle the exclusive casino license and make this industry a viable tax revenue source? You have two minutes, sir. Your time starts now. Start now? Mr. Torres, yes. Your time starts now. Our economy here, and I, I want to make this just for the record. I voted for the gaming industry for one reason and one reason only, is to protect all retirees, because that was the only industry that was able and willing to provide funds for our retirees. And we do, we do have regulations to regulate our gaming industry. And if there's anything to change, if anyone's gonna complain, it is the legislature who makes laws and amend laws. I have not seen any bill to amend anything in regards to either gaming, whether to reduce it from exclusive or down to three or other business license. But for me, any businesses here in the cinema needs to do their share because we do have our enforcement. But at the end of the day, I will continue to provide and support businesses that will take care of our retirees. And I will be there to sign the law if there's any changes that needs to be done. Thank you. Ms. Blon, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. Gaming can be a productive part of our tourism economy if it's well regulated and if it's run by responsible operators who are selected in a fair and open bidding process. But this casino has been a complete and utter catastrophe. And again, the responsibility for that falls on this administration. And it all started with those fact-finding trips, all expense paid, which Mr. Torres went on to Hong Kong and Macau. We don't know what happened on those trips, but we know the disaster that happened when they came back. And now, my administration will have a huge mess to clean up, thanks to them. 
Mr. Palacios, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your can, you, starts. can you repeat the question? Sure. I apologize. It's a two-part question, sir. What do you plan to do with the unfinished Imperial Palace Casino Resort in Garapan? And what do you think is the best way to handle the exclusive casino license and make this industry a viable tax revenue source? Thank you. The first thing that I will do or propose to do is put a lien on IPI's asset. I cannot believe that this government has yet to do that. They owe us $50 million. What are we waiting for? The second thing I'm going to open up and I'm going to abolish exclusive casino licenses and open up casino licenses and highly regulate them. We need to bet this is a very sensitive industry and we need to properly vet the applicants and the proposals that come in. It's unfortunate that this is where we're at with that casino. I hope that one day soon somebody is going to come up and do, make a proposal to take over that building whether it's going to be a casino or Thank Something you. else. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Flosius. Mr. Torres, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time starts now. The casino is the most regulated industry in the, in the world. And I am glad that, to say that we have David Commission, who has cited the industry, and it's already in court. He has that process moving forward. But you cannot change laws arbitrarily. You need laws to be passed by the legislature. And I urge the legislature to change the law so that I can implement that today. And I wish this law has been changed two years ago. Thank you. All right. You guys, how's your blood pressure? Everybody good? <laughs> all right then. I know you all are back there going, <gasps> holding your breath. So that's time to relieve ourselves. Uh, we're halfway through our question segment. And so we've got a 15 uh, minute intermission. Uh, so, so please candidates, if we will all respect uh, the, the rules and the decorum, and hopefully I don't have to interrupt anybody. I think that that would be fantastic if you all agree. Do you agree? All right. And I'm also glad that you're sitting down because the chairs have been made available for when you need to rest. Thank you. So I think we're ready to proceed. Yes? Okay, Josh, here we go. We're going on with the uh, gubernatorial debate question number seven. And this one is directed to Ms. Blonde. High costs of utilities affect the cost of doing business and the quality of life for CNMI residents. How would you address this issue? And would renewable energy be a part of your solution? And if so, how? Ma'am, you have two minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. Yes, absolutely, renewable energy is a part of our plan. We need to begin this transition finally begin this transition to a clean energy future and reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. The CNMI bleeds $50 million, at least, in fuel alone through the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation. We have aging, inefficient power plants and, and so much potential for renewable energy. We need to update our renewable energy portfolio standards. We need to update our energy action plan. These will be part of uh, our program of making this transition to renewable energies, but, but yes, that is part of it. I also want to address, though, the root of our issues at CUC, and that really is governance. We don't have a functioning Public Utilities Co Commission, and there are these gaps in key positions for qualified professionals in CUC. We have decades of non-compliance, especially with federal water mandates, and we keep slapping on band-aids on aging, inefficient power infrastructure. My priorities will be compliance with the stipulated orders for water and wastewater, to, especially to hire qualified professionals, and finally deliver clean, drinkable water for the people of the Marianas. We have $100 million for water infrastructure alone. That will be part of our infrastructure plan. Mr. Palacios, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. Thank you. Today, that is one of the highest, highest thoughts 
of our people, of our community, the debilitating cost of power. I had the opportunity to go straight to CUC and ask Mr. Camacho, what happened to our alternative energy? Guam just commissioned 60 megawatts. We need to get on the boat. Immediately, the becoming governor, we will make sure that we fix those engines, at least three of them, and then put, put pressure on CUC, help them get going with alternative energy so our people will at least have the relief that they've been lo looking for with alternative energy. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Torres, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. I want to thank all the CUC employees, all the hard work, the typhoon, they're out there helping all our communities. I, want to, I would like to also acknowledge that through my administration, we have put and maximized more than 20% of what is being allowed solar within the, path, within the grid of CUC. So yes, we are moving in there because of good leadership. Second, we have PSS. PSS is the verge of having solar panel across all schools. That is definitely progress. And that's addressing our issue today. CHCC, you see their, pole, uh, their solars? There's more coming. This administration, under Vinny and I, we will continue to advocate not just solar, but right now we also need to, to fix and bring in new engines. And I am proud to say the 10 megawatt engine is already on its way. It's in Korea, an additional 5 more million to buy and revitalize the other engine that's coming. That'll save everyone here, including our businesses, several cents discount. Thank you, Mr. Torres. Ms. Sivuan, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time starts now. Yes, let's thank CUC, and let's also thank the generosity of American taxpayers and those federal dollars that made those solar projects for PSS and CHCC possible. Let's also thank the efforts of Congressman Kilili, who, who made funding available for the CNMI to finally update our energy action plan. And the, the key that we will provide in our, is, our, is the leadership to execute on that energy action plan, in which renewables will be part of it, but also efficiency. That's the low-hanging fruit that we have yet to pursue in this government. Thank you. This is directed to Mr. Palacios. Typhoons have have caused much destruction to our power distribution system, businesses, and homes. Reports indicate that super typhoons may become more frequent in this region. What are your plans to establish a more resilient community that will bounce back faster than in the past? You have two minutes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> we were very, very fortunate that FEMA was on the ground when you two hit and Sotolor hit, and they assisted the Commonwealth recovery. Now, they have already put out a big project to harden the infrastructure in the Commonwealth, i.e. the power poles. We need to harden our power plant. We are very, very fortunate that our power plant was not destroyed during Sudalor and or YouTube. We're very, very fortunate. We must tell and instruct our CUC board of directors and our executive director to harden the infrastructure of CUC. I have to get into a big argument with my friend, Mr. Camacho, when after you two, we did not have water in the South which supplies, I sleep field supplies practically 60%, 60% of our water, maybe more. The power system was down and we did not have the generators on standby to power up those water wells. I am glad that through the CIP and OMB and the uh, public assistance program, we are now more prepared. The unfortunate part is the biggest generator 
for the water wells is not up yet. And that's an argument, there's an ongoing tit for tat between our CPA and CUC. Thank you, sir. Your time it. is up, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mr. Torres, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. The truth is, we are more resilient today than we ever have in the last 10 years. You can tell, all of you that have been here since 2015 with Soldier North. You see how fast we recovered? We recovered even faster in YouTube because of the relationship and the partnership that I have. I have pushed forward with all of our feet, whether it's FEMA, Department of Engineer, all the all the energy wells that we have. Now we have generators ready to pump them when we need them. You see, we're working on underground cable, not just for here in Sinomai, but also for Rhoda and Tinian. That is why you call leadership in making sure that we harden our infrastructures here. And under Vinia 9, we will continue to maintain that relationship and make sure that those fundings that we have here is being utilized for everyone that calls home, Sinomai Sino home. Thank you. Ms. Blunt, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. I'm sorry, last I checked, we have a number of projects for funded by FEMA that have been unacceptably delayed, going all the way back to Sotolor, Mankut, and YouTube. Look around at our schools. We should be hardening them and, and making them more resilient for, for more severe storms and for, for climate change. And how many of our schools are basically still in a state of disaster? There is no excuse for that. My administration will prioritize the fixing of our schools, will prioritize implementing all of these projects that have been unacceptably delayed, and we will also look at putting more lines underground. That needs to be part of our climate resilience plan. Thank you. Mr. Palacios, you now have 30 seconds to rebuttal your time starts. Thank you. On the day I was inaugurated, one of the first thing, one of the most, the first thing we made me was thanking FEMA, Guam Power Authority, and other power authorities in the region. Yes, our relationship is good today with our federal government. Thank God for being a U.S. citizen that the federal government was on the ground to help us and continues to be on the ground. Like Representative Sablon said, there's still a lot of problems. Thank you, sir. Your time is line. up, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Now we move on to the Next question, and this one directed to Mr. Torres. With millions of dollars spent annually on medical referrals, how do you plan to expand healthcare services within the CNMI and reduce the number of off-island referrals? You have two minutes. Your time starts now. I would like to thank all of our healthcare clinics, our doctors and nurses across. Thank you for your services. It is important to start addressing medical referral, and we have done that. I have done that under this administration. We are adding MRI and hyperbaric chamber to CNMI. That will reduce 70% of all medical referrals being sent from here in the CNMI. We're also working on getting and expanding our ICU rooms. Expanding our ICU rooms, our operating room, and radiology center. Folks, we, got, we are starting to put all the resources in for public health because I know how important it is to make our health care here a number one priority. Once we start eliminating health care being provided outside the cinema, everyone, everyone here that has family will be taken care of here. You don't have to do medical referrals, you don't have to do other fundraising because our MRI and our hyperbaric chamber expanding ICU is forthcoming. And that is the investment that I am currently having. Under Vinny and I, we will make sure that this funding and this project continue to move forward and provide public health for everyone that calls in on my home. Thank you. Ms. Blonde, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. One of my first priorities as the chair of the Health and Welfare Committee was to work on legislation to restructure and reform our medical referral program. And we worked closely with CHCC and with other stakeholders to develop that legislation because as many people did not realize at the time, there has never been enabling legislation for that program. And the governor's office never had the legal authority to run medical referral services in the first place. So we passed that legislation. We had a ton of public hearings. And the idea was to reform the program so that it could be sustainable. And 
And that legislation is now sitting with the Senate. As for MRI, that funding needs to go to CHC. It was allocated over a year ago, and the governor didn't start working on it until we started asking, what is the status? And CHCC said, there is no status, there is no money, no updates. As for how we reduce the waste and the abuse and the, the costliness of, of the med what we know as a medical referral program, this administration and the Senate are now Ms. proposing to create Ms. new uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Sablon, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Palacios, you have one minute for rebuttal on your time starts now. Thank you. When I first became Lieutenant Governor, that was one of the first things I was looking at. Ladies and gentlemen, 2018, 2019, the cost of medical referral was close to $20 million. You know where, where the cost is? It wasn't in the medical, it wasn't the doctor. It wasn't the medical cost. It was Trap the airfare and lodging. Why is it that some of our patients have to wait for three weeks in Guam, four weeks in Guam just to get an MRI? That cost, those costs have continued to escalate, and that's why we're here. I'm glad that Esther Munia has taken on the, 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 the medical referral. And it, it happened because the Attorney General told us that the executive branch does not have the authority. Mr. Palacios, your time has expired. Thank you. Mr. Torres, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal, and your time starts now. For the record, I am waiting for CACC to give me the specs for the MRI and the cardiology center so that we can start the process. Second, what well, everyone here knows our health care, as much as there's challenges, we provide better health care today than we have in the last 10 years. Under Senator Vinian Knight, we will continue to make sure that this MRI, cardiology center, hyperbaric chamber, increasing the, the ICU operating room, this will eliminate medical referral patients. And that will solve everything. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Torres. This next question is directed to Ms. Sablon first. Agriculture and fisheries in the CMI, CNMI have yet to reach their full economic potential. What is your plan to support local farmers and seafood producers to achieve viable operations while ensuring that environmentally sustainable practices are established? You have two minutes. Your time starts now. Our administration will support the expansion and development of our agricultural and seafood production industries. We see these as being compatible with tourism and also because they tap into local resources, including human resources, and, and create opportunities for, for jobs and for export products. Products for export as well as for our local markets. We import so much of our food. And in general, local food production is better for health, it's better for the economy, it's better for the hotels and the restaurants and the public school kids that, that eat local produce and local fish. Uh, so we will support that. We envision a realignment of all the agencies that have the resources to support agricultural and fisheries producers. So this would be Lands and Natural Resources, it would be NMC Crees, uh, CEDA, uh, SBDC, uh, the number of these agencies, and let's add PSS and hotels and restaurants to that network as well to connect the, the buyers of these products with, with the, the people who are producing them. Uh, that is what we envision for expanding and diversifying our agricultural and seafood industries. Mr. Palacios, you have one minute for rebuttal and your time starts now. We need to just do it. When I was at Fish and Wildlife, we were only catching and the only fishing industry was skipjack tuna. That was it. I had the work with all to ask the South Pacific Commission to provide a training program here back then. I'm glad, I'm happy that a lot of our people have gone into bottom fishing. That is where the money is. And with, with Dave and the experts of NMC, Chris, we will reinvigorate our agricultural sector in the Commonwealth. Thank you. Mr. Torres, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. In order for you to know what they need, you need to be like one of them. I am a farmer, and I am proud to be a fisherman. 
So what I have done is first is open up co-op. That is an excellent way of giving our locals the opportunity to sell their product. And I am proud to say that has been very successful. Second, I have put a million dollars to Rhoda so that they can do their produce. A million dollars to Tinian so we can embrace their ranching, their cattle ranch, and a million dollars for Saipan to embrace our fisheries, both Saipan and Tinian. Folks, that is programs. Programs that give your own locals the opportunity to showcase what you have. Because as a farmer, you, all you need is a little help, and this is the help that we provide. Under Senator Vinny and I, we will continue to advocate for every farmer and every rancher that calls Sinai home, whether it's Rhoda, Saipan, Tinian, or the Northern Island, and we need to start embracing our Northern Island as well. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Iguan, you have now have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time starts now. I think we can't uh, overemphasize the importance of, of creating these collaborative networks and realigning the resources that already exist to provide the technical assistance, the research, and, and the other supports that, that farmers and fishermen would need in order to build their, their businesses and, and produce quality products that, that will be desired on the market and, and could supply uh, local, local markets as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you Ms. Moore. Now we're on to question number 11. This one is directed to Mr. Palacios. Visitor arrival data show the CNMI does not have a high percentage of repeat visitors. Visitor exit surveys continue to reveal two primary concerns, which include the absence of nighttime activities and a lack of indigenous cultural experiences. What is your plan to address this issue in the short term and the long term? You have two minutes. Your time starts now. One of the, the most glaring answers the tourists give to MBA when they when they leave, and that's why they don't repeat. The Saipan is dirty. We need to clean up our island. We need to improve our tourist sites, and we need to promote sports tourism. And yes, cultural tourism. We talk about culture, yet we, we fail. We've been failing to provide the resources to our indigenous affairs and to our, our Repolos, I mean, the, our Carolinian Affairs Office. We need, we need to begin to nurture, really nurture our culture if they're going to participate in this industry. When we have only $100,000 of three employees at Indigenous Affairs and Carolinian Affairs Office, we're not doing it. Yet, we spent $15 million for a travel bubble that only yield us thousand visitors a month. We should have been doing better than that. Start thinking about it. We wasted opportunities. I dare you to go up to Marpi today. Go to the tourist sites. We need to reinvest, seriously reinvest in our tourism economy. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Palacios. Mr. Torres, you have now one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. Tourism is our number one industry here in the CNMI. And that's why I'm proud to say to the Governor's Economic Council, we have pushed to make CNMI a world-class destination. And it doesn't start today that you're going to realize tomorrow. The work has been done during pandemic, making sure that all of our tourist site is top notch. I want to thank all of our private partners who have signed in more than 80 private companies have signed in, more, more than 75 tourist sites around CNMI to revitalize and make CNMI a world-class destination. I have been pushing so hard, bringing back our Japanese market. Through my leadership, that has been successful. Second, we are pushing again for a new market, like Australia. That investment and tourists is forthcoming. 
Korea, we want to talk about investment. Under Senator Vinny and I, we will continue to make sure that our tourists is welcome here in the island. And I am proud to say we are seeing more local dancers than we have in the last 10 years. And I want to thank them as well for showcasing. Thank you, Mr. Torres. Ms. Iguan, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. Yeah, I'd like to ask, has Mr. Torres actually visited these tourist sites? Because I do, and I see broken rails, broken steps, non-functioning restrooms, no shower facilities. We could have been using this time during the pandemic to really clean up and beautify these islands to make them more livable for the people who reside here and also for, for the people who come to visit to make them want to come back again and again. We need a massive cleanup on, on all of our islands, but especially in our tourist sites and, and in the villages so that tourists will want to come and visit. We need to plan for sidewalks and bicycle lanes, trees and, and, and flowers. Um, there's so much that we could do. And one other thing I'd love to see in the CNMI, and this is a more long-term goal, we need a cultural center to celebrate the cultures of these islands and teach them to our younger generations um, and, and also share them with their visitors. There's so much that we can celebrate and so much that we have to offer. Thank you, Mr. Blunt. Mr. Palacios, you now have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time starts now. Thank you. You know, the mayor of Saipan, my running mate, is involved in tourism, educational exchanges. Also, is the one that renovated the Sugar King Park. I agree, and I'm glad that, that Mr. Blan agrees with me that we need to invest in our tourist site. I invested three to four thousand dollars of my discretionary fund to do. Put you, sir. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you, Mr. Palacios. Thank you. Your time has expired. Now, we are on to our final question. You all right back there? Okay. Breathing okay? All right. Good. Last one. Business and investor confidence are affected by the fiscal health of its government. With ARPA funds expected to run out soon, what are your plans to address government budget constraints while not raising taxes and fees. Mr. P Torres, you have two minutes. Your time starts now. Again, we're going to go back. In order for any of that to be successful, we need to bring and create a strong economy. And the only way we, we have, and the only way for us to do that, is bringing our tourists. Through my leadership, you have seen new airlines. That is what it takes to bring in an economy, to bring in a tourist. And I am proud to say that we continue to move forward our Japanese market. We were able to bring them back. We were successful in pre-pandemic, and then we're bringing them back now again. You want to talk about prioritizing our economy? When you bring back our tourism, that will bring opportunities for every occupation here in the Sino Mine, whether you're a beach boy, or plumber, or teacher, because the revenue will be here. Also, it creates jobs, NMTI opportunities for the youth. It creates, that is the opportunities to bring in all the tourist market here. And under Lieutenant Governor Vinny and I, we will continue to make sure that we move forward with all travel destination here at the cinema and making it a beautification and to appreciate Saipan Rhoda and the Northern Islands. And that what, that is how you make the cinema a growing economy to give every island the opportunity to grow. Thank you. Ms. Ablon, you have one minute for rebuttal, and your time starts now. The CNMI is receiving altogether more than $2 billion, federal dollars, that are supposed to assist us in recovery and building for the future. And there is no transparency at all in how these funds are being spent. Priority of my administration will be to prepare a report on the fiscal condition of this government and make it available online in a format that everybody can read and understand so that we know how these funds are being spent, how they've been allocated, what we have left, and where we go from here. One other thing I want to say is that we need to tackle public corruption because there's a real cost to that and that undermines investor confidence more than anything else is whether they can get a fair shake in, in dealing with this government. That will also be a priority in my administration. Mr. Palacios, you have one minute for rebuttal. Your time starts now. Tourism. 
like I said, we can continue to talk about things here, but we need to get off and get it done and stop wasting funds. Federal government are giving us the opportunity, two billion dollars of opportunity. We could be building, rebuilding our infrastructure. Are we? I dare you, and I invite you to go and see the tourist uh, sites. Go down to Garapan. Go down to Garapan. Where's that? Where's that supposed to be the center of our tourism? That looks like Skid Row. Seriously, I hate to say it, but walk down there. Really? We pay airlines to bring in tourists. Thank you, Mr. Palacios. We don't even clean We appreciate your time has expired. You. Mr. Torres, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Your time starts now. Well, our funds is made to spend, to stimulate the economy. Hiring 2,000 people, I'll do it again. Second, we renew Hyatt. We renew Crown Royal, Crown Plaza, Mariana Southern Airways, Mariana Pacific Airways. New investments coming in. That is a partnership that we have with, part with all of our private partners and the government. And Vinny and I will continue to strengthen that partnership because we know how important our business is to our community because it provides opportunity. Thank you, yes. Mr. Torres. I appreciate it. And that concludes the question segment of the debate. And so now we would like to offer the candidates an opportunity to make a closing statement. And we'll begin with Ms. Sablon. You have three minutes for your closing statement. Your time starts now. Thank you, Patty. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll say it again. There is so much at stake in this election. It's not just about winning in November, and it's about more than just the next four years. This is about planting seeds for the future we want and the kind of commonwealth we want to live in. Change is possible in the Marianas. Our problems are solvable. We have so much potential, so much natural and cultural beauty, a wealth of human talent. And thanks to Congressman Kilili and the Democrats in Congress, we have this unprecedented once in a generation opportunity, more than $2 billion to transform these islands for the better. We can make our Marianas an amazing place. We can bring back hope for a future that is healthy and safe and beautiful and just. We can bring back pride in our home and make investments in the education and well-being of our people and the critical infrastructure, the water, the wastewater, solid waste, power that, that we all need to thrive. It starts with good governance. That is the promise of our covenant. That is the change that is on the ballot in November. Change will come to the Marianas when we vote for it. So please, vote. Vota imen magas ni sinya unangoku. Imen magas ni ti un medagi pet un meser kenguan. Vota zuz and si lela, zaba ina zuda hamzu todus. Vote for leaders you can trust. Leaders who won't lie to you or steal from you. Vote for Layla and me. And we will help and work for everyone. Layla and I are number one on the ballot, and we humbly ask for your support. Sisus Masi, Kilisa, Salamat Po, and thank you. Mr. Palacios, you have three minutes for your closing statement, and your time starts now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this election is our defining moment. Together, we will reveal trust in our government, trust that was lost during the FBI raid, trust that was lost with the impeachment, and trust that is lost during the 
present case in court. Our governor, Governor Torres, said he is No, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Zhu, Man Bicillian, for it is you who have endured three and a half years of alleged unethical leadership where it is not what you know, but who you know. The Commonwealth was the envy of our of other government in the Pacific. Our forefathers, my father included, negotiated a covenant that granted us U.S. citizenship, economic opportunities, and equal treatment under the law. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our Commonwealth is at a crossroad. Under Appalachia's Appetank administration, the Commonwealth will be a shining example of government of the people, for the people, and by the people. Dave and I are running to rebuild our economy, to improve our public health system, to reduce the cost of utilities, to invest in our children and our workforce, to create opportunities for families by increasing home ownership, and to support our retirees and our veterans, to create a safer communities, and to rebuild our infrastructure. David and I stand by our records of over 50 years of combined experience in executive and legislative branches. Leadership starts at the top. It is empowering. And with your support, Dave and I will be the leaders that our forefathers envisioned and that our people need today. With your support, our islands would be a beacon of shining light, a source of pride, a government that our people can be proud of. This November, we ask for your support. Please vote Colossus Appetank. We're number two on the ballot. Thank you, Jesus Masi, Giliso, Zan. Viva Maranas! Thank you, Mr. Palacios. Mr. Torres, you now have three minutes for your closing statement. Your time starts now. To everyone that calls our Commonwealth our home, in this election, you have the choice to continue with the progress we have made and leadership you deserve when the next typhoon, pandemic, or economic disaster hits. You have seen me deliver the promises of progress and solution-driven leadership. If there is one thing I want you to get and remember from this, is this. All the solution and success does not happen on this stage. It couldn't happen with mere speeches. It happens with a dedicated team going to the front line with my front responders, going to the airport at 2 o'clock in the morning to receive critical goods, supplies, conducting Zoom meetings at 4 a.m. with our federal partners, to ensure that we get proper resources, establishing a relationship with all of our federal partners, FEMA, DOD, DOL, Department of Interior, and the White House. Over the last three years, I have virtually done this alone. I am running with Senator Vini Flores Sablon as my Lieutenant Governor. I need a partner that can be with me in the front line. I need a partner who will show up every day to work our Commonwealth deserves a reliable Lieutenant Governor. Remember, when you walk into that booth, that you are voting for solutions, voting for leadership that delivers, and you are voting for my Lieutenant Governor, Vinny Sablon, who we know will show up every day to work, and who will join me at the office or on the field. It's been tough running this government alone. Imagine working together with a reliable and capable partner. Manilus at Mananao, Nenda Malagos of Benoyam, Zum Doctor Jesus Monsigny, told the petition, support the shot, the special devoted confiance for the Manmakusha election. In Tingwa Nakada Diaz of Anmakazo, for a Hanson Interment in Marianas, Masia Hodzi, the Pansha Mono, and you want to temple typhoon, Hodzi Gaikis of Mena, Wohu, and you want to stay pandemic, Hodzi Lily. Kada dia uju gohu. Hadzi man gaikis in the first responder gohu. Safa sa ipuntanti puro mali. 
If I'm a good no Sagani selling your dad, I found a Sagani public cook of an agony in my domo Hanwo, the Sagani Kilekno, from a good no, the Perel said that that's not true. So, like a Shono by the Protei, Hamzini Toto Marianas, the Zangi by the Sagani, Unu Pusaga, the Yotu Puhano, the Hano Zabi Fanami, said Niki Putan Tetu. At the center of the Taigi Winnie Pogo, Gaiki Pogo, the Totagi budget. Safa, it is critical that he's there to address the budget, to safeguard every employee in the government. But for what? Viva Republican Party. Viva all of our GOP party. Every candidate in the Republican Party. Thank you, sir. Rise on, sir. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Thank you to all of the candidates. You can all express your appreciation for their time of your counts, please. Thank you.